panic. The mechanisms murder me. I should have learned organic. For all I have to memorize, I ought to win the Nobel Prize. Biochemistry, biochemistry, I wish that I were wiser. Now don't you feel like you know that stuff better? Don't encourage me. Doesn't that make more sense now? You guys want another one? Okay, hold on. Let's go. Here's one I just wrote, all right? You'll love this one. You know the song, Happy Days Are Here Again? Okay. Crappy days are here again. The sky above's not clear again. And the sun has disappeared again. Crappy days are here again. You guys can relate to this, right? Rain is falling from the sky. I wish I knew the reason why. Guess I'll have to wait until July for the weather to be dry. I do not mean to harangue since rain provides yin and yang because the flowers everyone love moisture followed by the sun let's stay happy till the rain is done in Corvallis, Oregon okay. now we will stop, we will stop what's that? it had nothing to do with biochemistry, that's why I sang it I thought you guys already had too much biochemistry so I think you need a little Okay. All right, so now questions. No? Yes, sir. Okay, so pH range is a very, very good question here. So I said, you know, a buffer is maximally active or, you know, maximally strong when the pH equals the pKa, right? If you think about that, that was occurring because I had equal amounts of salt and acid. And equal amounts of salt and acid mean if I dump in some protons, then there's enough salt there to absorb them. And if I dump in more acid, uh, dump in more sodium hydroxide, there's enough acid to give up protons to replace what was missing. Well, when do I run out of that ability to do that? Well, you can imagine that the more skewed that ratio is, let's say I've got 10 to 1. I've got 10 times as much salt as acid. Okay? What we see is when we've got 10 times as much salt as acid, and I want to go back to my figure here. Uh, when I've got 10 times as much salt as acid, what happens is I'm getting way over here. It's rising more rapidly, okay, compared to what it was over here. So I like to say that the effective range of a buffer is about one pH unit below to one pH unit above the pKa. Outside that region, it doesn't act very much like a buffer at all. It doesn't resist pH very well. If we get outside that range, that's what happens. So if I want to use a buffer, and let's say I want to buffer a solution around pH 4.5, then acetic acid will be a pretty good buffer because it's not more than a pH unit away. Right? 4.76 to 4.5, that's pretty close. That would probably be a pretty good system to use for buffering. This guy wouldn't be a very good buffer for that because it's at pK of 7.2, which is more than one pH unit away. Make sense? Clear as mud? Okay. Now, I'm going to give you another rule based on what, does that answer your question? Is that, okay. Uh, that one pH unit rule is, also allows us to make some sort of nice estimates about things. Okay? What does that mean? All right, I'll finish with the estimates and then I'll probably say a little bit more about it later. Let's say I'm right here at the inflection point. pH equals pKa. If I had a million molecules of buffer in there, I think you could easily tell me that 500,000 of them are going to be HA and 500,000 of them are going to be A minus. Right? Okay? Half and half. 
I've got half of each one. If I said, what's the approximate charge on that molecule, what would you say then? You'd say, which one? Right? Well, one of them, half of them's got the proton off, half of them's got the proton on. Can I average it and say that the average molecule has a charge of minus one half? Well, you could. We're not going to do that. Okay? We just recognize that when we're at the halfway point, we have half of them with one with the proton on, half of them with the proton off. However, if we get more than a pH unit away, we're going to make some simple assumptions. And the simple assumption is if we're more than one pH unit above the pKa, you tell me, proton on or proton off? I hear an off. I hear another off. You can cough, and that'll also be an off as well. <laughs> cough, <laughs> right? OK, so if I'm more than one pH unit above the pKa, we may assume, in simple terms, that the proton is off. And if we're more than one pH unit below the pKa, we may assume the proton is on. Does that make sense? Now, that's something I'm not going to give you on the exam. That's something that if you want to commit it to memory, you can do. Or you could figure it out. You could draw it out and calculate it yourself and figure it. But you need to know if I give you the pH and the pKa, you need to be able to tell me proton on or proton off, or are we somewhere in here? In which case, we're not going to decide. Make sense? So above it is off? Up here, it's off. That's right. Okay. More than one of, more than one above, it's off. More than one below, it's on. Okay? All right. I think you've heard me singing that's enough for today. So let's call it a day, and I'll see you on Friday. If the pH equals a pKa. Oh, if the pH equals a pKa. Okay, because right. I was thinking if it was a strong acid, you couldn't make that assumption. But you see, when we have a, when we have a pH equals pKa... Then you can. Okay. 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 Yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah. I missed I the part when you said the, the region. Uh-huh. Uh, I missed uh, Why is pKa inside it? This is the inflection point. This yeah. is where the pH equals the pKa. Oh, oh uh, why does this uh, increase rapidly over here and not here? Well, because there's not as much uh, ability to resist change in protons oh. when you don't have roughly equal amounts. Oh. So down here you've got, you know, very widely varying amounts of salt and acid. You don't have the ability to resist those changes. That, oh. To resist those changes, you have to have uh, relatively equal amounts of those two. Okay. One more question. Okay. Uh, uh, from the acid table you give us. Yes. Uh, I missed the part when you say uh, there's a couple of acid there. So uh, number one, number two. Uh huh. And I so it. those are molecules that have more than one group that can ionize. So the pKa for each one is given when you have one and two. Oh. So it has two groups that can ionize. It has two different pKa's. It has three groups that can ionize. It has three different pKa's. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah. Hi. I know you said this like oh, a few times. Okay. Um, so on this. Okay, wait. When the salt is more than acid, mm -hmm. then the pH is. Uh, okay. So if salt's greater than acid, what's what's the log term equal to? Um, salt is greater than acid. It's going to be positive. Okay. So what does that mean about pH and pKa then? If I add a positive number to another number, do I get a, a bigger number or a smaller number? And the pH is going to be greater. Okay, so right? Okay. Makes sense? Yes. Yeah, so okay, then this would be this is higher. That's lower. If I had more salt than acid. Huh? Okay. okay. Yes. Let's see. You guys have questions? Follow me over here. I can get the camera and take it apart. Come on over. 
Yes. That's good. Equilibrium. Uh, dissociation of uh, ions remain. Now that that equilibrium.